Hey, and welcome back to a new video on my YouTube channel. This time, I'm going to talk about how to sell your startup. Um, and yeah, I'm actually going to walk you through the exact steps that we took to sell one of our companies last week. Uh, base Templates was sold to an um, internet holding company called Round Ventures, and I'm going to walk you through the exact steps that we took and the whole process. And all the things that I'm talking about are mostly relevant for smaller businesses. So if your business is bigger, uh, you're most likely just hiring a M&A advisor that helps you sell the business. Um, they will obviously take the same steps. And a lot of the questions that you are asking yourselves are the same. But I think it's amazing that you can even sell businesses that are smaller these days. Um, and um, just as a little side note, obviously, it will always be easier to sell a bigger business um, because the work that a potential buyer is putting into these deals will probably be the same um, and like not dependent on the size. So if you buy a company for 5 million, it will probably be the same work for yourself uh, than if you buy a company for 50 million. So there, uh, a lot of buyers are probably interested in bigger deals. But no matter what, let's jump right into the process. So there are five steps that you need to take to sell your business. First one is preparation. Second one is reach out and listing. So this is mainly about attracting interest from buyers. Third up is about getting LOI, so letter of intent of companies that want to buy your company. Then you have the due diligence phase, everything that is in terms of checking, did you actually say the truth and um, really looking into your business. And then last but not least, the closing uh, and the celebration. But let's start with the preparation phase. So for the preparation, I think there are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself. First of all, what's your target price? So for how much do you want to sell the business? Several factors come into play on that, but I will talk about this a little bit later in the video. Second up, how do you actually present your business? So it's really, really important to have a storyline of where the business is right now, but also where uh, are areas to grow the business because no buyer wants to go uh, buy a business that really goes down or something. So they want to also have some fantasy on how they can merge that into their own business or run it separately so that they can actually have a nice outcome out of this. Third question, who would be an ideal buyer? We are going to talk about buyer personas a little bit later in the video, but you can already think about, okay, which type of company could be interested in this kind of business? So for, for which company would it add value? Or what could they do with it? And then last but not least, it's really important to know your own goals. So do you want to still um, be working in the business? Do you want to go out? Do you want to ca have cash now or cash later? And then afterwards, check if they align with the buyer. In terms of valuation, I think this is the most asked question ever. It really depends on your company. So at first, on the type of company that you're having, so everything with recurring revenue is obviously having higher multiples than um, one-time sales. Then it's also important to check the revenue, revenue distribution. So are there just very little clients with uh, high revenue or is it like a lot of clients with smaller revenues? Then also the history, so, so the trajectory of your business, but also things like current metrics. So current growth stats, profitability, um, also the size of the company really important. So if you look at most reports, you will see that company of a bigger size um, will obviously have a bigger multiple um, because they have like um, structured processes, more things into place. So it's a little bit more static um, and safe, if you could think though. And also everything that you have done in the company. So processes, team members are really, really driving a value of your company. And how you will find a range of multiples that is relevant for you is probably through comparable transactions. So that means looking at what kind of deals were made in the past. So for example, uh, in 2022, most SaaS companies sold between a multiple of three to five X on their annual recurring revenue. So probably you will also fall into that. And then it's a first step to find the valuation. Um, but you can also look at like comparable transactions in the public markets. So how are SaaS companies valued in the public markets and then um, try to get a sense on where you would fit in. And there's a lot of data sources. So for example, you could look at um, acquire.com uh, for like smaller businesses. 
but there are also public market SaaS valuations, comparable transactions, a lot of reports out there, just Google um, for valuations. And then you will find the same also for agency businesses or digital products. With this span, you can then start or open up the conversation with your buyer. And it's also always like a whole package deal. So depending on the terms of the deal, um, the value uh, valuation of the company comes together. In terms of preparation, what you need is three things. So first of all, a long list of potential buyers. Second up would be some kind of like investment memo or teaser deck. So some information around your business that um, is making them interested in like looking more into it. And then third of all, the data room with all the information that you have around your business. Um, this is for the buyers that are really digging in deep and, and really want to um, yeah, go deeper and see if it makes sense for them to buy the business. For the long list, um, so I think you can be really, really creative for the long list. The longer, the better, because then you can narrow down later on the process. And for base templates, it could be companies that uh, are in the same space. For example, Slidebeam, Pitch, OnDeck, or companies that have the same target audience. Because a lot of founders came to base templates when they were thinking about fundraising. So it could be interesting for a docent to buy base templates because they have a tool that helps founders to fundraise. And so it really plugs in together. And the more strategic an acquisition is, the more likely you are to get like a higher price in selling it. And for the long list, I would always start with a company name, company URL, and then really find a responsible person there. If it's a smaller company, it could be the CEO. Um, if it's like a bigger company, it could be someone from an internal M&A department or business development. And really try to find that person with email, name, LinkedIn, so you have someone to reach out to. And then last but not least, I would also search for my own reasoning, why it could be interesting for them, um, and also any additional information that I'm having. As an example, startups.com, I know they've acquired a lot of companies in the past and then brought them all together under this roof of startups.com. So it could be interesting for them to also consider base templates. In terms of types of buyers, so there are three main groups. First of all, the strategic buyers, so companies that are working in the same space and they have some kind of like strategic idea on how to integrate your company. Second up is more like PE, financial type of buyers, so companies that actually buy and sell companies for a living. A private equity could buy a company, then they are tweaking a little bit um, or buying together a couple of companies and then selling at a higher multiple. So these are like more financially driven. And third up, um, I call it the others. So these could be acquisition entrepreneurs. So for example, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that have made an exit in the past, but instead of starting from zero, they are looking for companies to um, start with. And this could also be something like search funds. For the teaser deck or your investment memo, this can either be a notion, can be a doc, can be a PDF, it doesn't matter, but it's about to show high level what your company is about. So which problem are you solving? What's your solution? What does the product look like? Then some traction metrics really show, oh, this is interesting. I want to take a look. High level financials um, and then also an outlook. So for us, it was mainly about like orders in the last 12 months, revenue, um, profitability, but also the numbers of users and the numbers of traffic that we were attracting. For the data room itself, it's really, really important that you put some effort into this. The more structured your data room and your whole process is, the quicker you will do the deal, but also the higher the valuation will be because you show professionalism in everything that you do. And the data room for base templates was structured in this way. So everything from a business overview to HR, legal product, and every information that is relevant for the buyer should be in the data room. So this could be customer contracts or p &L, product details, an FAQ. And especially the FAQ is interesting because um, you will get a lot of like questions from potential buyers and you can just put them into a Google sheet, for example, uh, where you collect them and then the potential buyers all have the answers at one point. Okay, now we are done with the preparation. We can move over, over to the reach out and the listing. So three ways to do this. On the one hand, there are platforms like Acquire, Flipper, Empire Flippers, mainly towards smaller businesses. Um, so you can just list your business for sale there. Second up would be brokers or advisors. So um, this is especially interesting for bigger businesses. They take care of the whole process. 
and are actually doing um, yeah, dedicated outreach towards potential buyers. They take between a 1% to 5% fee. If the deal is smaller, a bigger fee could also be some kind of retainer involved and they are very, very specialized. So they are specific deal advisors for SaaS companies and they know exactly all the buyers in the SaaS industry. They know the multiples, evaluations and can really help you drive the process if you are not so familiar with it. And then third up, outreach. So as I said, we created this long list of potential buyers and we can reach out to them and ask, hey, are you interested in actually buying this business? For the platforms, um, it's really, really easy. So it's here to create awareness. So there is um, a listing form where you can just put in all the high level information, mostly the same information that you have in your teaser deck. You can put in an asking price. Um, and this is just as an example that I pulled from the platform. And then, um, and then um, you can take it from there and really um, attract awareness, attract buyers. There is a little bit of a downside because of the public listing, um, because everyone can see that you listed your company. Um, but I think especially for the smaller businesses, it's not really a problem. And they take around 4 to 10% success fee, and it, takes, it works very, very well for smaller businesses. For the outreach part, so we did a lot of outreach ourselves. There can be a very basic outreach. So you could just say something in the likes of, hey, look, um, you have built a great company. We are thinking about selling base templates. Could be a right fit for you because X, Y, Z. So the reasoning that you collected earlier. Um, or you could even go more into detail if you know that it's already interesting for them because most of the um, potential buyers will ask for some level of detail and then say, hey, look, these are the page views. This is why it's interesting. And then... Uh, reach out to the person that you collected earlier and then they will probably get back to you and um, yeah, ask a lot of questions. And to get from a lot of potential buyers to LOIs, there is uh, yeah, several talks involved. And it always works in a way that they say, okay, I'm interested. They are asking a lot of questions. You are doing a call. You are checking, okay, how is the vibe? Do you want to sell to that person? And at some point, they got a lot of information um, from you and before all of this you are probably signing an NDA with them so after the first I'm interested you are signing an NDA then you are having these talks um, and this NDA is obviously a non-disclosure agreement so that everything that you talk about they don't use uh, anywhere else and they don't talk about it to other people and after a couple of talks you are probably seeing okay are they interested or not and they are driving it forward by sending you an LOI, so a letter of intent. And if they are not interested, they are dropping out in the process. And it's your idea to really get as many LOIs as possible in a very, very short amount of like time frame. Because I will talk about this a little bit later. If you sign an LOI, there uh, you can't negotiate with the other buyers. So you run the process and you can really say, okay, Please make an offer till this day in the best case. Uh, and then you have like three or four different offers you can choose from. The LOI itself. So um, in the LOI, it, there are a lot of information. So for example, you have the transaction structure. This could be around, um, okay, how much money do you want? Will you get right away? And how much money will you get later in the process through, for example, a seller loan? Then you will have a... Um, the purchase price in it, so the amount that they want to pay for the business. Then there is some information around the due diligence. So what do they want to check and how long will it take? And then really, really important, there's a timeline. So um, for example, you intend to close the deal in the next four weeks and two more things that are really, really important. So non-disclosure means everything that you are talking about will not be public and second up exclusivity. And as an LOI is not binding in, in the first place, um, there are like these two facts that are binding. So exclusivity means you cannot negotiate with another party once you've signed the LOI because they will put effort in checking your business and uh, make sure to not break that. Then you will probably assess your offer. So you will check how do you feel about the buyer? How do you feel about the person, price and deal structure? So does it fit in? What are the other terms um, that are in there? And also, how confident are you that the deal will happen? 
And you can obviously always go back and renegotiate the LOI um, and then take it from there. After the LOI is signed, you are jumping into due diligence. So due diligence is basically an investigation of your company. So they check, is everything that you said true? And are there any other things that they should know? So you will get a list of questions. You will give them data, access to your tools. They will check everything. And if you said the truth, probably the deal will go through. And um, yeah, to actually win in the due diligence, there are four rules. So first of all, quick response. Make sure to always be very, very quick on those. Always set up timelines. So very specific around, okay, um, till this day, we want to check these things. Afterwards, we are checking these things because the last thing that you want to have is deal fatigue. So getting bored of the deal or it really, really slips because it takes too long. Then your setup is really important. Your preparation is important. So show that you are professional and you know what you're doing. And then last but not least, please keep on running the business because it's nothing worse than numbers going down while doing the due diligence. You really want to show the business is still doing good. And then last but not least, you can close the deal uh, by actually coming up with an uh, asset purchase agreement or share purchase agreement, depending if you are selling the whole company or just the assets. And this is mostly done by your lawyers. So as you can see here, there were tons of different versions. And uh, for the purchase agreements, it's always important to know which battles to take. So they will, for example, come up with a first draft and everything is very, very positive for them and then you need to move back and negotiate some of the terms um, and there's always like a difference between the entrepreneurial approach so the thing that you agreed on with another entrepreneur and what the lawyers say so make sure to really really be fair on that and try to choose the battles wisely that you want to win and be aware of the things that are important to you and that are important to the other party finally you've signed the deal you made it and yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, I will do another video on acquisition soon. And if you want to learn how to build a startup from zero to one, make sure to subscribe to the channel.